Apple has released iOS 26.1 this week, the first big update since the launch of iOS 26 to general public. I'm surprised by the number of exciting changes that's coming to the iOS 26.1, considering it's a minor version update. I've already updated it and it's very stable. The battery performance has also significantly improved since the update. If you're on iOS 26 right now, you can immediately update it to iOS 26.1. I'll show you over 20 plus changes that's coming to the iOS 26.1 update in this video. Also, there's a small announcement towards the end of this video, so please stay tuned and let's get started. First, let's talk about some visual changes. The big one is, Apple is offering a toggle to control the liquid glass setting. With iOS 26, many users raised readability concerns with liquid glass. On iOS 26.1, under Settings, Display and Brightness, you will see a new liquid glass section. Here you can set it to Clear, which is the default, or the new Tinted option. Tinted will reduce transparency and make text more readable. Let me show you a side-by-side -side difference. The one on the left is running iOS 26, while the one on the right is running iOS 26.1 with the tinted setting. The place you will notice the immediate difference is the notifications. Look how readability is so much better over the liquid glass version on the left. Another one in photos. Look at the bottom tab bar. On iOS 26.1, text is more legible with a strong tint behind the tabs. Same goes for music tab bar, even on Safari web pages, the changes are very evident. Now, which one you like more is subjective, but you will notice this change sprinkled throughout the OS. We started with the UI changes, so let's continue with more UI tweaks in the update. Next one is to Alarm and Timer app iOS 26.1 introduces a new swipe gesture to stop the alarm or timer. This makes it less easy to accidentally stop your alarm. This also reminds me of the swipe to unlock gesture on the older iPhones. On the left, you can see the old UI where it's a button to snooze or stop. On the right, it's iOS 26.1 with the swipe to stop UI. I actually prefer the new UI. What about you? Let me know in the comments. Next UI change, another accessibility one. You can now give borders for buttons. It's easier to show. Under Settings, Accessibility, Display, there is a new option called Show Borders. When you enable this, pretty much every button on every iOS screen now gets a border around it, making it easier to see. Even tabs and search icons in Music, Photos and Health app. You can see a side-by-side -side comparison against iOS 26 without borders. This is replacing the button shapes option in iOS 26, which actually did not do much on liquid glass UI. For the next change, let's head to the Photos app. While watching a video, the video playback scrubber is now redesigned in an element of its own. It's a nice little tweak. With this, when I scrub a video, the timestamps are a lot more clear and visible. Comparing this side by side to the previous version shows the difference. I don't see the mute button for videos on the new update, which I really miss though. Maybe Apple will bring it back in the next update. Another minor tweak to the Photos app is, when you long press a photo for more options, some commonly used features like Share, Favorite and Delete now get a top header section. Next, UI change to the Phone app. It's a small difference, but the keyboard now gets liquid glass UI. Previous version had tinted numbers, but the new one looks more modern and matches the iOS 26 aesthetics. Okay, that's all for UI changes. Let's talk about some other features coming to the iOS 26.1. Let's start with Apple Music. When a song is playing, you get this now playing bar at the bottom. On iOS 26.1, you can now skip to next or previous track using gestures on this now playing bar. For example, to go to the next song, I can simply swipe left and it'll change tracks. Similarly, I can swipe right to go to the previous song. The animations are also very nicely done here. 
Next, did you know that on your lock screen, you can simply swipe left to go to your camera app? This works on any iPhone and any iOS. But I accidentally open up my camera when pulling out my phone from my pocket or the camera app opens when I'm trying to view more notifications. I have an iPhone with a camera control button and this gesture is totally unnecessary. On iOS 26.1, Apple has given an option to disable it. Go to settings, camera, scroll down and there is a new option to disable lock screen swipe to open camera. No more accidental opening the camera. If you go to settings and search for phone app settings, you will see a new option to disable phone haptics. Disabling it will remove haptic feedback when a call is connected or disconnected. Keep in mind, this is not the ringtone haptic. This is only for the haptics when a call is connected or disconnected. In the fitness app, under the workout tab, you will see a new tab, add icon at the top. iOS 26.1 lets you manually add or log a workout. You can select any workout, duration, start and stop time, and perceived effort. If you forgot to start a workout on your Apple Watch, now you can manually log them later. Next up, a minor UI tweak. I should have included it in the UI changes before, but basically, Apple is going from center aligned text to left aligned text. You should see this in a couple of places. First, in settings, if you open a main section, you can see the logo, heading and description left aligned in the new update. General settings, Bluetooth settings, cellular, Wi-Fi or anywhere there is a heading and description now has a left aligned text. We can even see this change in the home screen folder titles as well. Here's a side by side comparison for the difference. Next, a minor change to Safari tabs. Did you know that you can have a compact tab bar in Safari or have a full bottom bar? You can tweak this in Safari settings page. But if you use the bottom tab bar with more options, the tab bar on iOS 26.1 is slightly bigger compared to the previous update. You may not notice it instantly unless you're comparing it side by side. But it aligns better with the shape of the phone now. This change is very useful, especially for creators like me who use an external microphone. When I connect a mic to my iPhone on iOS 26.1, I can manually set the gain for the mic input. I can swipe to reveal accessibility options, tap on it. Here I can swipe to manually increase or decrease the gain for the microphone input. iOS 26 did not have this control exposed. You may already know that iOS 26 has a feature to record your audio and video during a FaceTime or regular call. This was going to save to the downloads folder on your files by default. But iOS 26.1 adds an option to let you specify the save location. This is under settings, general settings, local capture. Okay, those were the big ones, but there are multiple small changes coming with iOS 26.1. The Apple TV Plus app icon is getting a new look. It's also rebranded as Apple TV instead of Apple TV Plus. The auto mix DJ like option that's available on Apple Music, this feature is coming to AirPlay speakers too. FaceTime is getting a noticeable improvement. Apple says that FaceTime audio quality will improve, especially in low bandwidth scenarios, which is great to hear. There is new language support coming to both Apple Intelligence and AirPods Pro Live Translation. Here's a list of newly supported languages. There are also a ton of security fixes, battery life improvements and bug fixes. I've especially noticed improved battery life on my iPhone Air. So those are all the changes coming to the iOS 26.1. No big issues noticed so far and you can immediately download and start using this update. Speaking of which, there's also a small personal update I wanted to share with you all. I'm super excited to launch my personal website. You can visit the website from techwithag.com. It's in early stages, but I want to get your feedback before making it big. 
please let me know what your thoughts are on my new website and i'm going to be sharing a lot more useful material through my website like full-on blog style tutorials free ios shortcuts some of my favorite wallpapers and a lot more i'm excited to bring this to you and need your support and feedback so do let me know all right that's everything for this video i hope you found this useful drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i'll see you in the next one this is sanjana bye bye